First, Wyatt T. Walker, Chief of Staff of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and Executive Assistant to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Alan Morrison, New York editor of Ebony Magazine. Malcolm X, Minister of Mosque No. 7 here in New York City, a leader in the Black Muslim Organization. And James Farmer, National Director of CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality. Mr. Farmer, I think I would begin the program by putting the first question to you, referring back to this Ebony Magazine story that quotes you as saying that Negroes are fed up. You say they are, quote, not afraid to go to jail now. They wear jail sentences as badges of honor, not even being afraid of being shot. These people aren't going to stop. And I wonder, Mr. Farmer, how you would conclude that. Aren't going to stop until what? We aren't going to stop until a black skin is no longer considered a badge of deformity by the American people. We are not going to stop until the dogs stop biting little children in Alabama, until the rats in tenement slums in Harlem and the hundred Harlems throughout the country stop biting our people. We are not going to stop until the bigots of the South and the North no longer challenge a man's right to live simply because he is asking for the rights which the Constitution says are his, as happened to NAACP Field Secretary Medgar Evers, who was shot and killed in Jackson, Mississippi. We are not going to stop in a word until we have the same rights that all Americans have. We are not going to stop until we have jobs and are not walking the street unemployed in a proportion which is more than two times as great as among whites. We are not going to stop until we have the right to a house, a decent home, an apartment, any place we choose to live. We are not going to stop until we have the right to enter any place which serves the public all over the country. We are not going to stop in a word until America becomes America for all people. What would your assumption be about the time when, as you say, America becomes America for all people? Things are moving very rapidly now, and I think they're moving to a climax. This is a climactic stage of the struggle. And I would expect that within two or three years, the most brutal aspects of segregation in the South, that is formal segregation, will be eliminated. Segregation in businesses that serve the public. I would expect, however, that there will be exceptions, that in the hardcore states of the Deep South, such as Mississippi and Alabama, and the hardcore areas of the Upper and Middle South, it will take a few years longer for us to break down those barriers. I would expect that it will take several years longer in the North for us to wipe out the more subtle forms of discrimination in housing, in employment, in de facto school segregation, and of police brutality. I think, however, that within five or ten years at the most, I'll be able to take a vacation and go fishing. Uh, how do you gentlemen feel about Mr. Farmer's timetable? Mr. Walker? Well, I would agree uh, with Jim wholeheartedly that... Uh, the revolution now has been mounted. What we've seen in the last four or five years has been perhaps the rumbling and thundering of a revolution that had only established beachheads. And I think this is <clears throat> the critical significance of Birmingham, Alabama, that here the movement for Negro, the Negro's full emancipation took a significant turn. And I think the mood of the Negro around the country has been well, knowing the frame of reference in which Birmingham has existed. Uh, if Negroes can stand up like this in Birmingham, Alabama, then what the hell, we, can, we ought to do something here. And I think it has given a new sense of militancy and a new sense of direction to the entire Negro community in America. What do you think was the ingredient here that led to this attitude? And Mr. Farmer said a moment ago, this is a particularly crucial period. We're all aware of that. What has changed now? What has changed in this year and in last? Well, uh, I think the mounting of the revolution, in, in other words, there has been the contagion of heroism. I think the human spirit uh, admires uh, heroism and courage. And in an instance like Birmingham, they have seen this demonstrated by the young and the old alike, male and female. And it has an infectious quality. And the compounded frustration of 244 years of slavery and the last 100 years of quasi-freedom with uh, all of the geometric frustration that the Negro has had. Uh, I think this is a part of what Dr. King describes as a zeitgeist. It just had to come, and this is the moment. Malcolm X? 
Well, as a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and a Muslim, we believe that Mr. Muhammad has been raised by God to separate the so-called Negroes in this country from our former slave master and to lead us to a land of our own where we can stand on our own feet and solve our own problems. And because we uh, religiously believe that uh, it is intended, it is, a, it is part of God's plan to separate the former slave, so-called Negro, from the former slave master, the American white man, we also believe that uh, every effort to force integration uh, upon the white man or to force the so-called Negro into the white society is actually in direct and divine opposition to God and will, re and will meet with uh, bloodshed and destruction and no progress or benefit either to the so-called Negro or to the white man in this country. Mr. Morrison? Well, I agree with Reverend Wyatt Walker when he says that the revolution which uh, is, is now going on in America uh, against uh, second-class citizenship and against uh, uh, racial oppression uh, had to come. Uh, I, I don't altogether uh, uh, concur with uh, Re Reverend King's analysis, which I think uh, is well-intentioned but founded in a in his mystical philosophy that uh, this is a zeitgeist period, I think the revolution was was uh, the result of inevitable historical forces. Uh, and we must recognize uh, 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation was issued that, uh, that uh, chattel slavery was succeeded by racial segregation and that as chattel slavery uh, had to be overwhelmed and destroyed uh, by a military conflict and by force, uh, and it may be necessary, as we are seeing today, that racial segregation has to be confronted in a similar manner, and that the, the force and might of the state uh, has to be exerted in uh, uprooting uh, inequality from our society and in destroying a racial segregation, which is simply the successor to chattel slavery. Uh, the revolution, uh, and I am very uh, glad to note that that word uh, uh, has reached a new significance and a respectability uh, in our culture and language, uh, embraces all classes uh, of the Negro population, from the young to the old. They are uh, united in a determination which has reached a, a zenith, a new point in fervor, that they will not suffer indignities further, and that they are prepared to die. Negroes are prepared to pay the price of violence uh, in their struggle for equality. As a noted Negro educator stated this week, outside of the United States, I may note. But there it is. The confrontation is here, and we must face it and all of its consequences. And that uh, we, we must also be prepared uh, to realize that the struggle may take other than nonviolent means. Now, this does not mean that the Negro is by nature violent. The Negro wants his rights, and uh, the Negro American will achieve his rights. But it may be necessary uh, to defend uh, his, uh, his birthright, to defend his heritage, and to maintain his status and to go forward to the goals that he has set for himself to protect uh, his life, to protect his family, and to protect his status as a citizen. Violence is upon us, and we, we must face it. And I think that uh, there is great alarm in the land, in high places as well as low. And I think it is reflected in, the, in President Kennedy's great concern about what he calls moving the Negroes demand for equality from the streets into the courts. It has been in the courts for a long time, and the Negro became impatient. He became impatient and demonstrated in the streets. Now, the power structure of this country wants to contain the struggle. Where it, from, where it will go from here, we now have to consider. What do you mean the power structure wants to contain the struggle? 
I mean that uh, though 